Hello. Adam Rothenberg. Hi, Jay. This is Jay Michaels. If I'm on the line, you're on the air. Hi. There we go. The tables have been turned. The interviewer is now the interviewee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I've, I've been a long-time fan. Uh, when I say, uh, I'm going to say a long-distance fan also, because my so many of my clients, I, I, I do public relations for indie theater, and so many of my clients, whenever we talk about reviewers and things like that, your name always comes up. Can you call me Adam? Can call me Adam come down? Can can Adam Rothenberg come down to see the show? So so you oh, you you've been on my you've been on my my lists for for years. I'm thrilled to finally speak to you. Oh, I'm thrilled too. That's so nice to hear. Oh, <laughs> I, I I think I, I actually did an interview with your husband a few years ago. Uh, as as I'm not married to a man, I'm. I think you might meet a different Jay oh. Michaels. There's only about seventeen oh. of us in 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 the arts alone. I'm I'm interviewing another Jay Michaels this week. So, oh well, then I didn't. <laughs> I might be the other one. <laughs> so so tell our listeners about Call Me Adam and about you. Okay. Um, how, how far back do you want me to? So I'll do the quick recap of how I started. The, the call redial, yes. Go right ahead. Yes. Okay. So I I always wanted to be in entertainment somehow. I, I never really knew how that would be. I did stand-up comedy for a while on the, on the side of having a day job. And, and then that wasn't going anywhere. So I stopped and I was... I was still at my full-time job, and my friend was like, why don't you start a blog? Because I had been reading entertainment interviews for forever, and I thought to myself, well, I have questions I want to ask people. So I started emailing uh, people in the theater that I had met several times that I felt like would, would know who I was, and they said yes, that they would like to be part of it, and so I interviewed them, and then... I slowly started contacting press reps for the shows that were on Broadway, and um, it kind of snowballed from there. Snowballed is an excellent word because you're you, uh, when I when I decided to Google you uh, just to make sure I, I I had all my facts straight. I was like, wow, okay, look at all these links. You you certainly had you may you may not have been a good stand up comic. Well, I bet it was just they were bad audiences. <laughs> Uh, but you are obviously a phenomenal reviewer. Uh, uh, you've, you've reviewed some, some of the legendary names uh, within this industry. But Thank you. I, I'm sorry? I have, been very, I have been very fortunate with who I've been able to, to interview, yes. Uh, so, so now let's talk about right now. Uh, okay. let, let, let's, talk about, let, let, let's talk about today in the industry. How is it affecting you? Now, now you are a very visible person. You're, uh, I, every picture I see with you, you're, you're standing next to somebody, you're in a crowd, you're, uh, the, the whole stock and trade is, there you are with glitterati. Uh, what's going on now? How's it going for you now? It, 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 it's, it's interesting. I, I'm still doing interviews. I, I definitely have noticed uh, a, a scale back a little bit in the amount of of coverage, obviously, because there's no shows going on right now. Indeed, I'm still able. I'm still able to do my podcast, um, even those where I I was doing maybe two to four interviews a week. This probably has scaled back now to to, may, to maybe one a week. Mm -hmm. um, but there is, but through the uh, my podcast, which is bearing it all with Call Me Adam is on the Broadway Podcast Network, and we have found a way to do remote interviews. So uh, each, so I'm at my apartment, and the interviewee is at their apartment, and through the internet and our laptop, we're still able to do an interview, and the audio quality is still great. So, so that I'm glad there is an outlet. Now it's just continuing to reach out and seeing who's available to talk, even though everybody pretty much is available because they're not in a show, uh, still everybody is is sort of on their own emotional journey right now. So I feel like it's a little different. People, there are people who are definitely excited to talk about what what it's like to be in a show, and then all of a sudden to just have it stop 
and there's other people who need a little time to just process everything that's happening before before doing an interview. What do you find you're hearing most? Because you're hitting the Broadway community, you're hitting the some power players. Uh, uh, what do you what do you hear the most? What are pe- what's people's feelings? What's what's their hopes? What what are you hearing? I mean, everybody hopes it comes back sooner rather than later, but there's definitely an uncertainty as to as to when that's going to be. I, I mean, I know the projected time frame for Broadway to come back is is April 12th, April 13th ish, but. I do personally feel like, and I think this is just my my own opinion, as the pandemic continues to go as it is, I don't think that target date of coming back is so soon. And there are two shows that have already reported that they won't be coming back when Broadway shows return. Hangman announced that they won't be reopening. And um, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Right, I just read that one. Yeah, uh, yeah, Laurie Metcalf and Rupert Everett, Mm. that that won't be reopening. So I do wonder if there will be other shows. I think depending on how long Broadway's continued to be shut down, we'll definitely determine which shows do come back and which don't. And I mean, it's, it's very sad because so many, just so many people are affected. It's not just the actors, but it's all the stage hands and the, and the, um, I mean, it's everybody that gets involved in putting a show together. The ushers, the you know the, the the costumers, the set designers, casting, press, the av- the advertising industry. You know everybody is affected. And it's not just the Broadway industry. I mean every industry is affected. By I com- this. Completely, I, I do a lot of uh, film and TV people and uh, these days, and and many of them also are saying the production has been halted. We don't know when yeah. when we're going back to work. We may even cancel series. Yeah. Yes. I mean, one thing I'm, I'm trying to do, which I, I, I just started, I just posted my first video last week, was I am reaching out to the Broadway community and some film and television actors to send, have them send me videos of what they're doing at home while they are quarantined. So I, I call the video series, What Will I Do? <laughs> and um, it's co-created by... Julie Halston, who um, I'm sure everybody knows from Sex and the City, and she's right. been on Broadway. Let's see, you can't take it with you. Charles Bush, many of Charles Bush's show, um, most recently, The Divine Sister, and so she she co-created the video series with me. So we're asking everyone in the Broadway community and some film and TV stars to send me videos just under two minutes of what they're doing at home. So I posted her video last week, and. I'll release a video a week because I feel like I feel, you know, there's so much news coming at us at at every direction, whether it's online or on TV. I still want to try to lift people's spirits up because it is a very trying time right now and we do need to find an escape. So if this is one way that people could, you know, be just, I don't want to say distracted, but if they could just have some enjoyment away from the news for even just under two minutes, it's something to, to give people a laugh or a chuckle or or something. And they still get to connect with their favorite stars in in a different way. I, I think you're very smart to say distracted because we can never forget what's going on because this, this is affecting the whole world politically, financially, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally. This is... this. I, I, I'm a bit older than you, and and I remember I remember going way back to I remember when budget cuts in the Reagan era, in the Nixon era. I remember AIDS. I remember nine eleven. I remember all of them very very uh, uh, lucidly, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, and I have never seen where the entire world has been shut down. Um, yeah, I'm an avid lover of science agree. fiction, and I think we're we're living a science fiction right now. Uh, what, yes. what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing right now? To uh, yes, you. I, I'm. I'm thrilled to hear you're doing exactly what I thought you'd be doing. You. Are, you are now reaching out to every member of the community, even if they're in their in their bathrooms. You know, there you are. You know, interviewing them. Uh, what are you doing to for your for your own distraction? I am. Uh, I, I mean, oddly enough, of, of all the shows to to rewatch. So I I love Law and Order SDU. <laughs> However, I've I've 
have never watched the series all the way through. And while I've seen probably almost every episode between USA and ION and every other channel that is on, I've never seen it all the way through. And there's, there is a storyline that happens within the squad that while each episode is individualized pretty much for the crime, there's, there is a, a link through all the, through the squad of stories. So I'm, I am actually enjoying watching that story be told. So, uh, I'm watching that on Hulu. Uh, I just finished the first five seasons of Schitt's Creek on Amazon, which I absolutely loved. Um, it's a brilliant series. I don't have the pop network, so I cannot watch the final season yet. So I have to wait for that to come on Netflix, um, which hopefully isn't too far off after they wrap up this final season. And I am, you know, I, I play work with friends. I, I play Wheel of Fortune on my phone. I, um, I'm, I'm also, I mean, this is sort of in limbo right now, but I'm supposed to move in with my boyfriend in May. So I have been packing up my apartment a little bit. However, I'm not sure if that's really going to happen in May. So they're sort of in limbo with that. You're being judicious. So that's sort of how I distract myself. You're being judicious when you say you're not sure it's going to happen. Now, I, I read somewhere in the post, uh, I'll just say the post, quote unquote, uh, that, that Broadway's not going to open in April, that, that projections are, yeah. are pushing further back. Now, you have spoken to, you have been, a, your finger is on the pulse of it all, as people say. What's, what's your hypothesis? When do you think it's going to, 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 to come back, or at least start to come back? I think it probably will be closer to May or June. Yeah. I mean, so much of it depends on, I mean, obviously there, there are new cases every day and the numbers are increasing. It, it really depends on when, when things get under control with the, with the coronavirus. And it, it's so hard to say. It's so hard to say. But I, I, I definitely, I don't believe it's going to be April 13th as everybody or 12th as everybody is hoping. I do think it's going to be, you know, beyond that. Uh, you know, I mean, Broadway's also never been shut down for this long. Right. You know, right. E e even, even 9-11, which was devastating to, to us. And that was also, I mean, that was also worldwide, the, the fear that it set off and everything that's happened. Um, you know, Broadway then was only shut down for a few days. So. I remember, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and it did, it did recover, and, at, you know, at that time, people, def, you know, definitely did come to shows. You know, there were definitely people who were nervous to come back to, to New York, but there were a lot of people who were like, no, we have to stand with New York and, and help them. Um, you know, it, everybody has always said, you know, Broadway's always there for everybody, and, and entertainment in general. I mean, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for actors, and directors and, you know, everybody who works in the entertainment industry, I mean, what, what would people do? So, um, you know, they've been there for, they're there for everybody every single day. So we definitely do have to be there for them now and help support them in, in any way we can. And one way definitely to do that, at least for Broadway, is to donate to the Actors Fund, which provides many financial needs for, for everybody in, in the industry. Did you watch Rosie O'Donnell's, uh, uh, I'm going to call it a telethon. Uh, yes. <laughs> did you watch Rosie O'Donnell's telethon yesterday? I did. I did. I, I really enjoyed it. it. I loved her show when it was on, uh, on, on TV, and it was so nice to, to have her be back on the television like this. And I loved how everybody was just popping in and out of the screen and, and it was nice to see sort of everybody at home and sort of get an inside view into where where they where they live and what they're doing. Um, I think I, I speak for a lot of people when they say I love Patty Lapone's basement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I mean, everybody was commenting online about the jukebox and her her uh, wall unit of cassette tapes, and I saw the pinball machine, and now I'm like, is Patty Lacone a pinball wizard? And <laughs> I mean, how do I get to have a pinball machine competition with her? Because that would be how fun would that be? I, I was a big fan, and, and, and I think this was the second distraction for everyone. Aside from seeing some of their favorite stars, I was going, so that's Kristen Chenoweth's kitchen, eh? Okay, so what does she yeah. have? In the, what does she do? How big's her refrigerator? Wow, look at that thing. Uh, I, I think that's going to be, it's like Better Homes and Gardens on Broadway, just for, for, for a few moments yesterday. It was really yes. thrilling to see that. Now we, yes, and she raised uh, five hundred thousand dollars to the Actors Fund, which was is it, incredible. Was that the final amount? Five hundred thousand? I'm so glad. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm that's so That's what glad. I just read this morning. Excellent. So, yeah. Now, now here's the big question. We keep saying the word Broadway. We keep saying Broadway will return. Broadway is this. Broadway people. Broadway. What's Broadway going to look like when this comes back? Uh, I've had people say business as usual. I've had. I've had people say, no, now it'll be more accessible because everyone's going to come out of their homes. And other people are going to be like, it's going to be $900 to sit in the balcony. What, what, do, you, <laughs> what do you think it's going to be? Uh, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, I think there will definitely be a large segment of the population that will be definitely 100% excited to get back to, to live entertainment sitting in a theater. Uh, I think there's also still going to be a segment of the population that is going to be nervous to be around large crowds. I mean, I think that goes for for every activity. I think it's going to take a while for people to be comfortable being in large crowds again like that. And maybe not. I mean, I could be completely wrong. Maybe people will just be like, thank God this is over and yes, let's all just go back. But I think there will be some people who, who might be permanently affected by this and, and nervous to go out again. You know, I mean, we're, we are all being, we are all sort of, we're isolated. I mean, for, we don't know for how long, but it's, it's already been a few weeks. And, you know, it, it does things to different, you know, everybody reacts differently to this kind of situation. So even though people are having their, virtual happy hours and whatnot, and that's great, and you definitely need some kind of social interaction. I mean, we're basically relegated to our homes, yep. aside from aside from going to the grocery store or getting outside for, for a walk. Um, you know, and for some people, it's not as easy to reach out to, to friends and family because, you know, they, a lot of people do have social anxiety and whatnot, and so... Uh, I mean, I don't think you, I you, you, it from your original question. No, you, you've you actually I, sparked I, another good one. You've sparked a, a, a great <laughs> thought. Do you think? Um, uh, do you think that it's going to eventually get get into us to be far more healthy and far more cautious? Do you think? Uh, what, what's the po- dare I say? What's the positive of all of this? Do you think we're going to be a, a healthier society? Do you think we're going to be a more careful society? Uh, I've noticed that people smile at me in my neighborhood. They don't even like me in my neighborhood, but but now they're smiling at me uh, because you know when they see me on 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 my front stoop, they're they're like, you know, hi, you're still alive. That's great. Do you think we're going to become a care a more caring place? You think, uh, especially New York, that that our reputation is is going to change and we're going to be we're going to be the happiest place on earth above Disneyland? I. I mean, I hope so. I, I hope there will be a, a positive change from this. I mean, certainly in in, in the days, and I, and I I don't mean to keep comparing this to September 11th, but certainly in the days and weeks right after September 11th, there was definitely a, a change in in society in New York, and people were very willing to help and be more friendly to people. And um, will that be here as well? From this situation, I hope so. I hope so. Although I think, I think with this situation, in a way, for some people, I think it makes people more nervous to be around other people because, you know, I think, I think pe- some people might be thinking as they're passing by people, well, do they have it? Oh, what am I touching? I mean, there, it's so much about you always have to wash your hands. You always have to wash your hands. I mean, now if you get a package from Amazon, they're they're encouraging you to wipe it down and spray it down before you bring it into your house. And then, so uh, there's a lot of for for people who are germophobic, 
I mean, I think this is a very heightened oh, sure. event for them. And, um, you know, people who are, who are, were constantly washing their hands beforehand, you know, it, uh, this is an extremely trying time for them. And, um, I mean, it is for everybody, but especially for people who have, who have, um, who had those kinds of issues beforehand, it's probably even more heightened now. So I, I hope it, it makes us a better society. I mean, I've seen some reports online that, um, some animals have come back to, to parts of the waters because, um, you know, there's less yeah, pollution. It, exactly, from, yes. From the, so I hope there's a positive change from this, but I do worry that um, it will also sort of cause people to be nervous of of other people because, I mean, I can only really speak for my, I guess I can really only speak for myself, even though I feel like I've been doing a lot of generalizations. But for myself, I mean, when I do walk around, I, I definitely am more nervous about passing by people now because, you just don't know while there's a lot of people who have been tested and you know, more more positive cases are coming out. There's still a lot of people probably who haven't been tested yet or, you know, this is also a tricky time of year because it's allergy season. Oh, right. Um, yes. So, it's, so, you know, it's sometimes while there are definitely symptoms for the virus, there's, there's other people who may think, well, it's just allergies because these are the things I've had when I've had every allergy season. So, That's a real good point. That's probably why it spread. Time. People thought, eh, it's, it's pollen. And, and right. It certainly wasn't. Right. I, I, right. I, I snicker to myself. You, you said something interesting about being cautious around people. Hopefully there'll be a, a hybrid of that. And, and while we might be cautious around strangers, we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be a little more ardent about turning strangers into, into friends. Uh, yeah. so that we don't have to be that way. And and I, yeah. I, I laugh to myself because, yes, out there the germaphobes are sitting in their apartment with more Lysol than they're allowed, and, and yeah. they're all screaming out the window, See, we told you! Exactly, yeah. Adam, yeah. Adam thank you so much. Uh, it's really been oh, a pleasure cyber-meeting you uh, and, yeah, and hearing you. from you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm now on your mailing list, and I can't wait to, to, oh, to hear how you... Uh, what you're doing during this, and then I can't wait to 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 see you when you're back in action, interviewing the thank the you. finest and the greatest. Uh, thank you so thank much you. for taking some time. Oh, you're welcome. I, you're I'll welcome. definitely thank link you. you. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'll link you when this is uh, when this is online. Oh, terrific, terrific. And um, I guess if I could just say, people want to follow me on social media: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Call Me Adam NYC, and you can find my podcast. Bearing it all with Call Me Adam on the Broadway Podcast Network, and then uh, and they can check out my print interviews online at callmeadam.com. Terrific. I will make sure everyone knows that. Great. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you. Ciao. You're welcome.